I think if there's one thing we can say at this point after reading this latest chapter and just really seeing what direction this arc is taking, Izuku is no longer a child. It's very obvious, especially by the title name of the latest chapter. It's just like, it basically says he can no longer be a kid. It's just like, yeah, Izuku... He's had to be forced to grow up in a very quick way. I mean, he's now having to accept the responsibility and the weight of what he holds on his shoulders, having one for all Shigaraki hunting after him, you know, having the enemy literally searching for him to try to take his quirk, you know, the pressure that others around him, you know, could be in danger, his family, his friends, just everything about this arc is taking a very interesting and grim direction. And I really love how since the very beginning of My Hero Academia, this is what the series has been kind of directing its main plot towards. Like, literally, when we open up with My Hero Academia's first chapter, it stated the, the entirety of the world is oversaturated by heroes, and you have people wanting to be heroes because of money, fame, and all that, and now we look at this, you barely see any heroes around, you see that the entirety of the city is just in rubble and destroyed, you see that, you know, there is heroes desperately trying to do everything they can to protect people, but you have the public not even having any faith within the heroes whatsoever. There's just so much to really look at and see that the beginning of the story really was prepping us for this arc, and Horikoshi is really taking this into a very interesting direction, and I just, I love how all of this Horikoshi has been planning and set up for a very long time to this very point. I appreciate that greatly, and I love seeing how the story is really developing into this darker tone, because we're no longer in, you know, like the, the school anymore. We're no longer in, you know, the whole kid phase. We're now actually seeing adult Izuku, basically, or, you know, a more mature Izuku trying to actually stand up and have to accept responsibility, and even the other students around him trying to do the exact same thing. It does make me wonder, though, what Bakugo and Todoroki is currently doing thanks to everything that's really just going on right now in the world because I really doubt those a part of UA that was, you know, in Izuku's class are just going to sit around and, you know, not do anything. I feel like someone like Ochiko you know, Bakugo and Todoroki would definitely go out of their own way to search after Izuku and be near him or help him out or whatever. I feel like something like that's probably going to happen eventually because I doubt Bakugo is going to be very happy with the sheer fact that Izuku got up and just, you know, did his own thing and kind of left him behind after the whole Bakugo kind of, like, jumped in front of Izuku before Izuku got skewered by, you know, Shigaraki. So just, when we look at everything, something's bound to happen with those characters and I can't wait to see how Horikoshi kind of incorporates incorporates them into the story in this arc. But anyways, let's let's talk about, you know, this this current chapter and the latest chapters that's been kind of focused entirely around muscular. So many I know probably think that Izuku encountering muscular is a little bit too soon. And and to some degree I can kind of understand that fact. Because when we look at when muscular was introduced, he was a guy that was like a literal brick wall in front of Izuku, and it was the first time Izuku really stood up and became what it means to be a hero. It was, in essence, Izuku truly became a hero in that moment when he stood before Muscular and protected the young boy behind him. And it was an iconic moment, easily one of my favorite scenes of the entirety of the manga, and one of my favorite episodes of the anime of My Hero Academia. And so seeing Izuku come up against Muscular, it was more of a showcase of how much Izuku has grown since his encounter with Muscular, and basically showing that he's no longer that same naive child anymore. He's more matured, and you know, he, you could see that he is someone that knows what he needs to do, and he's not going to play around with it whatsoever. And I do like the little hint that the fact that the reason why Muscular was defeated wasn't entirely thanks to Izuku. It was also thanks to seeing how, you know, our boy with vibrations was able to do enough damage for Muscular to actually get defeated. So I do appreciate how everything ties together. Izuku wasn't the sole reason why Muscular was taken down. I do think that Izuku could have taken him down. But the point though is, is that 
you know, it wasn't entirely Isku that brought him down. So that is something I do appreciate, but it was more of just showcasing the differences between Izuku's original fight and what we're at right now within the story, and showing that Izuku, despite going up against a monstrosity like Muscular, he wanted to know what Muscular was thinking, what made him tick, you know, why did he choose this path of violence, why did he choose this path to do these awful horrific things that he has done throughout the story, and I do appreciate this little add-on to Izuku's character, this is something that was actually mentioned early stages of My Hero Academia, when he kind of encountered villains for the first time and encountered Shigaraki at the beginning of the story. If you remember, like in the first 15 or so chapters of My Hero, Izuku was always fascinated about heroes and villains. He wanted to know more about the villains and why they would do these things, and that kind of overall character trait of Izuku kind of subsided a little bit for a very long time. It was there, but just not very prevalent, didn't always appear. And I do like how that trait is once again reappearing, and Izuku's really taking it to a level and trying to see what's really going on here. Why are these individuals being like they are? Is there any way that they could be different? Is there any point in redemption? Can they be redeemed or saved in any way? And that's what Izuku is trying to find out. And him encountering Muscular like that really says a lot, because, you know, he's going to encounter a lot of people like Muscular, but he's also going to encounter a lot of people that's probably in the same state as Gentle was that we saw a very long time ago and he's gonna have to basically realize that there is some individuals that you just you can't talk with they are just maniacs they are individuals that will just go after you without any care in the world and you can't speak with them and negotiate whatever they will just want violence and Izuku once again learned this the hard way with muscular there was just nothing he can do about it and so we have the whole transition with Gran Torino within the latest chapter and he's like I should have made the kill, I'm sorry, and he's like, there's no reason to be stiff, Izuku, he's like, look, sometimes, you know, killing is actually salvation, I do appreciate that line, because it ties in with Izuku's motive to save Shigaraki, or at least save everyone in his eyes, because this goes with the entire overall theme of what it means to be a hero in this world, because we gotta remember, Izuku's philosophy is to save people, he wants to save people, and as we found out clearly with the last arc, there is a line that some heroes make to where they will save civilians, they'll save heroes, but they won't save villains, and even though they're villains, they're still technically still people, and if you truly are a hero, you will save a villain. And that's the point here, is that when we saw Izuku trying to save Shigaraki, there was some that obviously was against it and upset about it in the community of My Hero Academia, but if you know Izuku's character, it does make sense. It fits in line with what a hero actually should do. They shouldn't just stop at not saving villains, they they should save them because they're a hero. They're, they're supposed to be, you know, the quote-unquote good guy. So, that's the thing about this. But, with Gran Torino's talk with Izuku before Izuku took his cape and added a part of his hero design, Gran Torino's like, look, sometimes the answer in the save someone is by killing them. And in a, its own way, this is kind of true. Because you gotta think, there is probably a lot of individuals and quirks that really plague someone to the point to where they're just gone. They're lost. Like, let, let's think about Twice. Twice is a really good example. Twice, we saw what his quirk did to him. His quirk literally destroyed him. Like, yes, he could potentially maybe have changed somewhat, maybe, 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 but it doesn't change the fact his quirk literally destroyed his mental state for so long that he became an outcast, and sometimes being freed from life itself probably is the only way to save someone, and I do appreciate how Horikoshi kind of mentioned that to Izuku, because it brings up an overall dilemma within the story. Will Izuku be forced to make this decision against Shigaraki? But the better question is, will he be forced to make this decision before he faces Shigaraki again? That is something I think many are not really taking a moment to think about. Because, you see, yes, we know Izuku's gonna have to come up with that question, and an answer to that question, when he finally faces Shigaraki, and all for one. But I'm willing to bet you there's going to be villains that Izuku's going to encounter before them that are going to make him wonder if the only way to save them is by actually killing them. And I wonder if that is what Horikoshi is planning. Is Izuku willing to take that step and save someone by that means? Because then it makes you wonder now, 
how this deludes the entirety of what it means to be a hero and saving as well. So I, I really love what Horikoshi did. He really brought up an interesting point and Gran Torino is definitely going to have Isuku really thinking hard about what he said probably for a very long time. It's probably going to be the main Fred, plot Fred of Isuku's character for this entire arc. But um, enough with that though. Let's talk about Isuku's injuries. So Izuku, we know with the uh, last arc, he he looked like he destroyed his arms. He he was in really bad shape. I talked about it a lot while I was reviewing the chapters of that arc, and we get some confirmation on what kind of damage Izuku took, how bad it is, and if he is recovering or not. Now at this point, we don't fully know all of the quirks that are a part of One for All. There still can be a regenerative quirk in mixed in the pool but at this point in time though it might not be the case what we do know however is that izaku he is still damaged and he didn't fully break his arms beyond repair for the sheer fact that he has evolved with his quirk and he has gotten better usage and and in its own way, it does slightly make sense. I, I see why some would have, a, you know, a little bit be upset about this plot point of the story, because you're led to believe throughout the entirety at the end of the war arc that Izuku basically destroyed his body, and he was not going to be able to use his arms anymore. But now seeing this reveal, he basically has some repercussions, but not really. That, that's basically what the chapter did, and like I said, I can see why some would be upset with that. However, there is something that does make sense with it, and we, I do like how Horikoshi uses little flashback panels to kind of showcase this. He shows that the reason why Isuku's arms didn't entirely get obliterated was the fact that, once again, he's learned how to output his strength a lot better. For instance, 45%. But he was someone that was using Black Whip to reinforce his arms to be able to withstand the impact of his punches. So that is another little nod there, and I, I'm very thankful for that flashback panel to really showcase that what, that's what Horikoshi was doing, saying yes, this is why his overall arms were able to sustain a lot more force because of all these little things adding up. So, even though, once again, I understand why some would be upset with that, it does make sense in context of the story. So, I'll let it slide. However, I hope that Horikoshi doesn't make this a habit and he has Isuku continuously pushing 100% and then Isuku gets off scot-free if he doesn't have a regenerative quirk. That that wouldn't be good with me in my eyes. But if he does somehow have a regenerative quirk or he's able to re recover things to Aerie or whatever, okay, fine. But at the time being, no. So we'll, we'll see where that's going to go, where that story path is going to lead us with Izuku's injuries. And speaking of Izuku and the hospital and all that, we got to take a few moments to really just dive in to his mother and that entire beautiful, beautiful page with seeing a younger Izuku walking up and is like, oh, I'll save you, mother. And she's like, okay, oh, it's all my, oh, no, it's my boy Izuku. And you see how she smiles and she hugs Izuku. And then the panel right underneath that, you just see Izuku holding his mother as she's crying and you see him all wounded and battle scarred and it's like it's gonna be okay it's gonna be fine I'll be back and all that and it's emotional that 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 panel that page hit me really hard I was like holy crap it really just goes to show you once again how much Izuku has changed as a character and he is not the same person he's really been forced to mature as a person he has no longer that little kid anymore and to kind of ring this home even more if this would have been Izuku like like at the beginning of the story, or even, you know, 50 or 70 chapters ago, I'm willing to bet you Izuku would have been fanboying so hard if he was working with All Might as a hero, but also working with the top three heroes right now in society in Japan to take down villains. He would have been fanboying so hard, but seeing him not really care too much and just doing hero work, it shows how he's no longer a child anymore he really has become something else and he is now really just saving people he's doing what he wants to do and that is to save others i appreciate that it's this is a good chapter this is a good arc so far and i love what horikoshi is doing with this and hopefully he keeps it up i'm excited to see how izuku is going to combat villains in his way and i do wonder if gentle will appear this arc i do hope gentle appears i really want to see my boy back but uh oh yeah one thing I do want to state before I kind of wrap up the video, though. I want to talk about the fact that uh, Izuku's armbands that he's using, his reinforcement equipment, that actually, I think, is a reference to Melissa 
from the My Hero Academia movie. So yeah, uh, we're getting a little bit of a tie-in with the My Hero Academia movie and how she makes equipment overseas in America, and she's probably the one that made those gauntlets for Izuku. So once again, we're getting clarification that movie is in its own way loosely canon, and it does tie in with what's going on right now. I like how All Might's connections and all that, and that movie is kind of playing a huge part right now within the story. But I guess I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And with that, guys, be safe, stay healthy. Chibi out.